Hey, it's Dominic, you're listening to Sin, and joining me on the phone, a man who's involved in many bands, has his own PR firm, which keeps him very busy, but of course is most well known as a co-founding member of the band Pelican, Mr. Trevor DeBrow. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing all right, it's good to hear. Um, firstly, I just wanted to say how excited, uh, exciting it is that Pelican's coming back down to Australia. Two years have, have passed since the last time you were here and a lot's happened. One of the co-founding members, Laurent, has left the band, uh, which uh, wasn't really a, a big drama, but he was, was, was he a primary driving force in the songwriting and sort of like, and how much did that sort of shake up the band? Uh, quite, quite a bit, I guess. On one level, quite a bit, and then on another, uh, we, we managed to make the transition so smoothly that it didn't feel like as big of a shake-up as it could have been. Uh, he was definitely a major force in the band in terms of writing and then also in terms of creative vision. But, you know, all of us over time have been very democratic about things, and uh, in terms of writing, it's always been pretty collaborative. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we just reached a point where... After years of touring, we were all kind of burned out, and we kind of took something of a break from the band. And when the rest of us were ready to get back into it, his heart just wasn't in it in the same way. And he didn't want to hold us back, but he didn't didn't feel inclined to continue. But uh, our our inspiration and motivation is still there, and you know we were able to tap into a lot of the same creative energy, but I guess in kind of a little bit of a different direction because it was missing one of those one of those primary ingredients in in what used to make the band what it was. So it's kind of like the almost the first page of a new chapter or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, because your most recent release, Forever Becoming, is is kind of, it's like it's really heavy both emotionally and sonically for almost the whole record, uh, with the exception of sort of like the back end of the record, like the last couple of tracks. It's it's mostly pretty dark and and, and foreboding. Um, w- so with the with the change in the lineup, with the with the change in ingredients, have you discovered that the songwriting is 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 more naturally a darker in a darker place, or, or was the choice to go that way? Was it was the choice to go that way more conscious or, or subconscious? I would say that we never really make conscious artistic choices. We kind of turn ourselves over to to the inspiration and and follow it where it takes us. But I think all of us had dark times between this record and the last record, and uh, I think I think that was just naturally where our headspace is going was was somewhere a little bit darker. We tried to structure the record in such a way that it it kind of takes a path from the dark into the light, so that sort of why we uh, we backloaded it with some of the more melodic songs because it is you know I feel like one of the threads that's always gone through our work is is that our music is dark and and perhaps angry to a degree but it, it always kind of holds on to a grain of hope and I think we wanted to structure the record to kind of reflect that yeah yeah it really it really fits in that sort of uh, like that that sort of story in that way yeah and you've stated that being an instrumental band wasn't by design in many of your interviews but has being an instrumental band that exists under so many different genre tags like indie and experimental and post metal and sludge and whatever has that allowed the band to play in areas or on shows that a heavy music band wouldn't normally play definitely and uh, i mean we saw it from the fir- first days in our you know in chicago cuz uh, when we started we were primarily involved in the the hardcore and punk scene in chicago and we were kind of doing something a little bit different and it gave us the opportunity to play different types of shows and we started getting on metal shows but then because we didn't have a vocalist uh, a, a, a lot of the chicago indie rock scene kind of latched onto it as well you know they may have may have had proclivity for heavy music but they didn't realize it because they were put off by uh, you know screaming vocals or whatever so it's definitely given us a lot of opportunities. I mean, we've been able to play with everybody from uh, from Carcass to Tortoise, and and it never really like it never really doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Mm. Because we ourselves as listeners and as players are interested in a really wide range of sounds and music, and I think that we tap on into a lot of different kind of things in different ways. And yeah, it makes it hard to classify the band, which. Is kind of nice in a way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's. We don't have to worry too much about being pigeonholed. Yeah, that's that's always. It, it's very. It'd be. I imagine it very freeing creatively to not be able to to not have to worry about being put into a box. That's always good. Yeah, yeah, and being instrumental, it, it's sort of like the 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 palette is completely wide open in terms of what we can do. Mm. We don't have to worry about our songs fitting lyrics or you know structures that make sense to. You know, the the story is in the the story of of the song is in in the mind of the listener and their interpretation. Yeah, yeah. 
And your first album actually was titled Australasia. How much of, it, of that choice, it's going back a few years now, I know, how much of that choice was due to actually sort of, do you, do you, do you like the area or was it just to be just a cool sounding word that you just thought that, that fits the, uh, that fits the, that'd be a good first album? Um, well, right before we recorded the album, Brian went down to Australia for a trip. Uh, he had a friend that was living down there at the time. This word Australasia was a word that he saw a lot down there, but we had never seen that word in, in our part of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess it, it's common currency down there, but not here. And what we liked about it was that, uh, you know, we used a lot of, the, the artwork for the record is all completely photographs from his trip that were treated um, by Aaron Turner. And we wanted, a, you know, a name that kind of tied that to the artwork, but then also we liked the idea that the word Australasia, at least in our part of the world, is has uh, a sense that's really familiar, like it's it's constructive words that we see a lot, but it, it's also something that's really unfamiliar, it's sort of uncanny, and it kind of, uh, to us, kind of uh, created the, like the idea of this landscape that's familiar but not familiar. It, it's both known and foreign at the same time. Uh, I think down there it was interpreted differently <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it, the, the word isn't so, it's not as odd. Yeah, you know? yeah. But we didn't. We when we did when we did the record, we didn't really think we were going to play outside of our part of the country, even. Yeah, <laughs> so, true. On the, the, you know, let alone internationally. So. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, it is like from from an outsider perspective, I could see how it's sort of like almost a almost a psychedelic type of word. Yeah. Yeah. From what I can tell, uh, you're a big fan of of Justin Broderick. Uh, I am as well. I love the remix that he did of Angels, uh, of, of the Pelican song Angels. Do you think you'll be working with him again on anything at all in the future? And are you looking forward to the new Godflesh album? Um, yes, to both of those things. I mean, <laughs> we Justin's really busy, so it's hard to pin him down. But we would love to do another remix or even a collaboration down the road. And we've talked about that. Uh, both of those things in the past, but it's just sort of like never fit into the calendar anywhere. In terms of the Godflesh record, I am fortunate enough to have heard it, and it's unrelentingly punishing, and it's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's it. that's good news. Oh. That's exciting news. Yeah, pretty okay. stoked about that one. Cool, cool. I, I can only assume how busy your day to day is, um, but uh, what's on the horizon for yourself and f- and for Pelican after after the tour, I guess. Uh, well, we just have a couple more shows this year after this tour, uh, a couple of festivals in the state. And uh, other than that, I, I think all of us are in a, a headspace where we want to get back to, to writing. The last record we wrote mostly with the three of us, but late in the process we added a, a second guitarist, Dallas Thomas, who kind of helped us finish three or four of the songs and, mm-hmm. and kind of added a little bit of flavor to the songs we had finished before he joined the band. But uh, we really, I think we'd really like to start working on some new material that incorporates him more and, and kind of build a record from the ground up at, with this new lineup. And then in addition to that, as you said, I have multiple other musical projects running concurrently. Yeah. And all of them are busy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the way to be, is, is keeping busy. Uh, but uh, I did read that in your downtime, uh, what little, little downtime you have, you do actually play uh, video games as well. I'm a bit of an avid video gamer myself. I was just, uh, like, just a, more of a bizarre question. I don't know if you'll, if you'll actually have an answer for this one, but do you have a favorite video game soundtrack? Huh. Uh, I mean, it would have to be something older. Yeah, you know what? Castlevania. I always really like the Castlevania soundtrack. That the is original. It. That I is mean, a good I have choice. One of the newer Castlevanias, and it's not as good. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Like really minor key stuff, very dark, uh, eight bit. So it's kind of got that very distinctive old school Nintendo sound. Cool, cool, cool. In support of uh, of their newest album or their most recent album, Forever Becoming, Pelican are playing a handful of dates at the end of July, most notably Friday the 25th of July at the Hi-Fi here in Melbourne. And for all the details, you can see our Facebook page or their f- Facebook page. And once again, from Pelican, Trevor, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yeah.